I'll put these out there um, every day. It beeps really loud. Um, I'll put these out there every day in case you're absent. If you're not feeling well or something, you need to stay home. Um, I'll try to get the video out there. Um, or if you miss something in class, just want to go back and take a look, you know, over a problem, that'll be fine as well. Okay. All right. So unit three, lesson five. We do not have a test this week. We will have a test again next week. Um, so next week's test will cover all of our rational unit, which we've done some of when you were here and some of when you were at home. So I'd like to spend some time taking some questions this week as well. Um, so if you have questions, probably bring those to class with you on Wednesday and we'll take a look. Um, I know tutoring is tough right now um, because, you know, you can't come in the mornings, you can't stay in the afternoons. Um, we don't have lunch anymore that you can do Zoom during. So um, I'm going to try to spend as much time in class answering questions as I can. Okay, so if you have any of those uh, bring them with you to class, okay? All right, so we just have this lesson, and then we're going to jump into graphing, and graphing's kind of hard, so I've broken it up over four different days. Okay, so we'll spend four days on our graphing stuff, okay? All right, um, so lesson five is about solving radical equations. Um, it's kind of funny that it falls into this unit, but it falls into this unit because a radical is really just a rational exponent, okay? So when we talk about like the square root of something, really we're talking about something to the one-half power. So that's why it falls into our rationals unit, because rational, remember, is just a fancy word for a fraction. Okay, so really what we're talking about today is things that have a fractional exponent with them. Okay, um, I'm going to start off with some that maybe are a little bit easier, but the last one that we work on today um, will get pretty hard. So take some definitely good notes um, as we go along today. All right, so we'll start off with one that you probably saw in Algebra 2, just kind of a little Algebra 2 review here for you real quick. Okay, so when I have that square root and that 3, nothing fancy here. I'm just going to square both sides. Okay, so I'm going to square both sides to get that square root off of my x. Okay, so the goal is always to get x by itself. And if I square the left, I'm going to be left with x plus 4. And if I square on the right, I'm going to be left with 9. And so on this one, I get that x is equal to 5. Okay, a big part of this lesson is going to be to check your answer. I'll move that over. I know you can't see that. Okay, be sure on this unit to check, or this lesson to check your answer, because we are looking for something that we call extraneous solutions. I'm going to write that word extraneous down. Okay. Extraneous is just a fancy word meaning extra. Okay, so on some of these we'll get an extra solution that if I put it into my function, it will not work. Okay, if I put it back into my equation, it will not work. It's what we call extraneous solutions or extra ones. Okay, so on number one, if I plug in, it's going to work. Usually the ones that don't work are when you have two. Okay, but this one I would have the square root of five plus four. I want to know if that's equal to three. And so is the square root of 9 equal to 3? Yes, it is. Okay. But always on these, check your answers and make sure that they're not extraneous before you turn them in as answers. Okay. All right, any questions on number 1? So starting off kind of algebra review. Okay. All right, let's get a little bit harder. On this one, I'm going to have some stuff to go along with my square root. And I'm going to have an extra x value out there on the side. Okay, in a few minutes, we're going to get into what happens if I have two square roots. Okay, but for right now, I just have the one square root. And when I have just one square root, I'm going to get it on one side by itself. So I'm going to keep my square root of 3x minus 11 over here. And I'm going to move that 5 over to the other side with subtraction. Okay, now that I have the square root by itself, now I want to square both sides. Okay, so I'm going to square this side. And I'm going to square this side. Okay, on this side, I just get my 3x minus 11. 
Okay, but be careful. The tendency on the right side is to say that that's x squared plus 25, but it's not. There's a middle term that goes with it, okay? If you are good at the shortcut method that you may have learned in algebra, that's okay with me. If you are not, go over here on this side and do x minus 5 times x minus 5. That's what x minus 5 squared means, okay? Sometimes if you don't, sometimes that middle term disappears and it's going to mess up your answer. So watch out for this. All right, when I multiply these, I'm going to do x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 5 gives me negative 5x. Negative 5 times x gives me negative 5x. And negative 5 times negative 5 gives me plus 25. Okay, now I can see that middle term. Okay, now I can see that this is really going to be x squared minus 10x plus 25. Okay, so somewhere along the way you may have been told that there's a shortcut to squaring. Okay, and it says that you square the first, you multiply the 2 together n times 2. That gives you that negative 10. And then you square the second. And again, if you're good at that, go for it. That's fine. You can use it. Okay, but if you're not good at that, please go over on the side and take the time to multiply those together so that you get the right answer for that part. Okay, any questions on what I've done so far? Doing okay? Okay. All right, so now I've got a quadratic that I need to solve. I'm going to put everything over onto one side together. I'm going to move over to the right. Okay, if you want to move over to the left, you can. You just end up with a negative x squared. I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to say that I'm going to have 0 over here and x squared. I'm going to subtract over my 3x. That gives me minus 13x. And I'm going to add over my 11. That's going to give me plus 36. Okay, so I subtracted over my 3x and I added over the 11. Okay, now I'm going to need to factor. If you are having trouble with factoring, be sure and get on like Khan Academy or somewhere like that and get a good review of factoring because factoring is going to be big in this unit, especially with the graphs that we're coming up on. Okay, so I'm going to factor. I'm going to factor that into x and x. And what are my factors of 36 that will add to give me 13? 9 and 4. That's right, good. 9 and 4, good. And I want to have negative 13, so I'm going to make both of them negative. Okay, so 9 times 4 gives me 36. 9 plus 4 gives me 13. All right, my last step, I'm going to take these out and set them equal to 0. And so that's going to give me that x is equal to 9 or x is equal to 4. On this one especially, because we have the two answers, let's go and check our answers. Okay, so I'm going to plug back in to my original back up here. Okay, so I'm going to say that 5 plus the square root of 3 times 9 minus 11, does that equal 9? And does 5 plus the square root of 3 times 4 minus 11 equal 4. Okay, so notice that I've got an x on the other side, so I plug in my 9 twice, I plug in my 4 twice. Okay, so let's run through. I've got 5 plus, this is going to give me 27 minus 11. Oops. Okay, 27 minus 11 gives me 16. Is 5 plus the square root of 16, 9? It is. Yeah, good. Okay, but watch out over here. On this side, I've got 5 plus the square root of 12 minus 11. Is 5 plus the square root of 1 equal to 4? No, that's right. Good. 5 plus 1 gives me 6. 6 is not equal to 4, and so there is my first extraneous solution. Okay, so please don't say that they're both answers. One of them came out to be extra, so 9 is my only solution to this problem.
Okay. Um, you can just box in the one. You can even write out here to the side that four came out to be extraneous. You can exit out. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you know that four was not a good solution to this problem. Okay, four would not work if I plugged it back in. The reason why this happens is because we're squaring and square roots, and so you got plus and negative, positive and negative issues. Okay, so that's kind of why that happens. Good. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay. All right, um, let's try this one. We worked one kind of like this on Friday. Um, but just in case you weren't here Friday, let's take a look at this one. Let's do 3x plus, oops, let's put an x in there. Let's do 3x plus 1 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 25. And we'll do the hard one. Okay, so we worked one a little bit like this on Friday. When I see one like this, I'm working with that rational exponent, or again, rational is just a fancy word for a fraction. Okay, so when I see a fraction in my exponent, I want to raise this thing to the power of its reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of two-thirds going to be? What's the reciprocal of two-thirds? Three halves, good. Okay, so I'm just going to take that two-thirds, I'm going to flip it upside down, and now I'm going to raise it to the power of its reciprocal. So I'm going to raise it to the power of three halves. Okay, if I do that to one side, I need to do the same thing to the other side. So raise it to the power of its reciprocal. The reason why I want to do that is because when I do this, I multiply, so my 2's cancel out and my 3's cancel out, leaving me just with 3x plus 1 on this side, or 3x plus 1 to the first power. Okay, on the other side, however, I've got a little bit of work to do. Oh, well, that was fun. Oh, for real. Hang on. I can fix that, I think. I think our Wi-Fi is kind of going up and down today. Come on. It says I'm connecting. There we go. Okay, try again. All right, um, when I work with this 25 to the 3 halves power, again, this is what we did on Friday. So hopefully you got a little practice with this at home if you were an at-home person. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make this, the 2 on the bottom, be the type of root. So 25, and I'm going to take the square root of that. So the number in the denominator is the type of root. The number in the numerator is then what I'm going to raise all of that to. Okay, so the number in the denominator is your type of root. The number in the numerator is what you're going to raise it to. Now, I like to do my square root first because I know that the square root of 25 is 5. And then I know that 5 cubed is 125. Okay, um, if you cube first, you're going to have to cube 25 in your head and then take the square root of that. You'll come out with the same answer either way, but I highly recommend taking the root first and then raising it to the exponent. Okay. Um, I also mentioned if you're an 8A person, you weren't here on Friday, um, that you might want to make a, yourself a list somewhere in your notes, because you can use your notes on the test, um, of all of your perfect cubes through 5. So like 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, and to the fourth power. So 2 to the fourth, 3 to the fourth, 4 to the fourth, and 5 to the fourth. So be sure you write that down somewhere in your notes so that you can use that. Okay. We'll talk about it again. Okay, now I've just got an algebraic equation to solve, so I'm going to subtract over my 1, and I'm going to divide by my 3. This one doesn't divide evenly, so I'm just going to leave it as 124 over 3. Okay, um, this one should work since it just had the one solution. Let's check and make sure, so I'm going to do 3 times 124 over 3 plus 1. I want to know, oops, to the two-thirds power, if that's 25. 
Okay, my threes will cancel out. That leaves me with 124 plus 1 gives me 125. And this time I'm taking the cube root. The number in the denominator is my type of root and squaring it. I want to know if that's equal to 25. And it is. The cube root of 125 is 5. Squared gives me 25. So this one checks out. Okay. Even though you just have the one solution, it's still good to go ahead and check and make sure that you got it right. Okay. But usually with one solution, you won't have an extraneous. It's usually when you have two or three that something comes out extra. All right. Any questions on that one? All right. You ready for the hard one? All right. Shake your brain out a little bit. Here we go. You might want to turn the page. <laughs> This one will take a little bit of room. We'll do a couple of these. Let's do the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 7 minus the square root of x minus 4. I'll move that where you can see it better. Okay, this is the last one we're working their notes, and I'll work some on your worksheet. Okay, so the difference in this one and number two is that now I've got two square roots. Okay, I have a square root on both sides. If they are on the same side, I would highly recommend moving them to where it looks like this, to where you have one square root on each side. Okay, so what's tricky about this one is that seven that's with it. Okay, that's what's tricky about this one is the seven. Okay, I'm still going to start by squaring both sides. Okay, so I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to square that side. Okay, when I square over here, I just have x plus 3. Okay, this one over here gets a little harder to square. I'm going to go over on the side, and actually I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper so that you can see better. Okay, squaring that is the same thing as multiplying by itself. Okay, so 7 minus the square root of x minus 4 squared is the same thing as this. So I'm going to go over on the side, and I'm going to multiply these together. Okay, again, if you're good at the shortcut, that's fine. You can use the shortcut. Just be very careful with it. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 7 times 7, which gives me 49. Okay, then I'm going to multiply 7 times this negative square root gives me minus the square root of x minus 4. Okay, we don't distribute into a square root. It's just going to, that 7 is just going to kind of hang out out there in front. Okay. Then I'm going to multiply my negative square root times 7. I'm going to get the same thing, minus 7 square roots of x minus 4. Okay, and finally, I'm going to multiply these together. So my negative times my negative gives me a positive, and my square roots disappear, which leaves me with x minus 4. Okay, so what I get here is I've got negative 7 and negative 7 of these same things, which gives me negative 14 square root of x minus 4. So I can combine that because the numbers inside my square root are exactly the same. Okay, then I've also got a plus x, and I've also got a 45. So squaring that, all of that stuff squared, looks like this. Okay, let's go back over here and let's write that down. So I've got negative 14 square roots of x minus 4 plus x plus 45. Okay, any questions on that part? 
Okay, one nice thing happens right here, okay, and that is that I've got 1x on this side, I've got 1x on this side, so I can let those cancel out. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. It's not like a, that's not like an always thing, but it happens nicely on this one. Okay, I'm going to try to get my square root now by itself. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to subtract over my 45, which gives me negative 42. And I'm still trying to get this by itself. If that negative 14 is held together with multiplication, what do I need to do to move it to the other side? Divide. That's right. Good. Okay, so I'm going to divide by negative 14 and divide by negative 14, and that's going to give me 3 is equal to the square root. Oops, we can't see. Hi, how are you? Very good. Good. Okay, now I'm back like I was in number 1. Okay, so now I'm back in number 1 position again. All right, so what do I need to do to get that square root off of x minus 4? Square, square both sides. That's right. Good. Okay, so square both sides. Oops, let me switch to my pen. Okay, square both sides again. Okay, so now I'm back at 9 equals x minus 4. Okay, so the second time you square in a question like this, it gets a lot easier. The square root's going to go away. Do you need me or are you just watching? Oh, no, I okay. absolutely love math. Okay. <laughs> Do you all know Dr. Nazar was a math teacher in a past life? <laughs> he was. He could do this. All right. That's right. It is. Very good. Dr. Nazar answered the question for you. Wasn't that nice of him? <laughs> They're like, where were you when we were back up here? <laughs> All right, 13. Okay, that might be my answer, but what do I still need to do? Check it. check it. That's right. Don't forget to check for your extraneous solutions or those extra answers. Because we got 1, we should be okay. Okay, but let's plug in and make sure. 13 plus 3 on one side, 7 minus, on this side, 13 minus 4. Okay, so everywhere that you had an X, plug that 13 back in. Yeah. Is there ever a time where there's going to be no solution, like it's always an Occasionally there is. Um, on the worksheet today, there is not. I will try on the test to make sure that at least one solution works. <laughs> but if you were working like a word problem or something like that, you might end up with something like in calculus where you came out with none of the solutions. They're all extraneous. Yes. It'd be a really weird situation, but I hate to say always, but good question. Yeah. Okay, square root of 16 on this side, 7 minus the square root of 9 on that side, gives me 4 equal to 7 minus 3, is 4 equal to 7 minus 3? It is. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be nice if I could say if you only have one solution, it always works, because then when you came out with one solution, you wouldn't have to check. <laughs> but it's good practice to check that answer anyways. Now you know you got it right for the test. So that's a good thing. Okay, so that's the hard ones. Okay, so when you start off with two square roots like this with a number that's added to it or subtracted from it, you're going to end up having to square twice. Okay, all right, let me show you the difference. Grab out your homework um, packet for me. And there's one on here, or a couple on here that are different. So grab out your homework packet. Let's turn to, it's not labeled Worksheet 5. Um, speaking of which, um, if you are not here on Friday, will you label this worksheet to be Worksheet 4? I mentioned um, on Friday, there's a um, program that I can use to make worksheets. It's called CUDA, but CUDA does not let me change the top um, labeling of worksheets. So I can't label that Worksheet 4. So please label that one Worksheet 4 for me. Okay, and then this was the lesson that we did on Friday. So this is where um, I told Friday people uh, might be a good place to write down your perfect cubes, 
um, and your perfect fourths. So if you want to take a minute to make that list, and then we'll jump over to worksheet five. So if you're a B-Day person, just hang out for a second. Hopefully you notice the answers to that one are on the back, so you can check your answers as you go. There's my horse. Down a little. Up a little. Down a little. <laughs> <laughs> 